drop that bitch. I'm not sure where to start today's video, but I'm going to start it with this clip. I don't play this fuck around shit, homie. You got something to say to me, you're gonna come, come to me straight. Tell your boy too, whatever the fuck you guys want to do, I'm right here. I'm in Vallarta, you guys want to fucking meet up? I go by my goddamn self. Tell your boy too, whatever the fuck you guys want to do, I'm right here. I'm in Vallarta, you guys want to fucking meet up? I go by my goddamn self. No dog, he's over there tagging you. Is this him? Is this him? Yeah, it's fucking me, dog. What's up? I told you, dog. Let let me know when the fuck you're here. Let me know when he's here. Let me know when the, any of you motherfuckers are here, dog. I'll let you, all you fucking pussies have it. Number, homie. Give a fuck about nothing, bro. I'll tell you right now. Let me know. When you pull up, when you pull up to Vallarta, way, me hablas, dog. You fucking call me. You got my number, homie. I don't like playing this beat around the bush bullshit, bro. I really don't fuck with that. I'll tell you that right now. Anna knows me, bro. I don't like to get mad. I don't like to get mad because I fucking do some dumb shit when I'm mad. So, when you guys are here, you, your bro, is this him? Yes, it's me. It's me. I fucked up. I did something I didn't want to fucking do, but I'm here. I'm solid. I'm gonna hold up to it. What's good? So, whenever the fuck you're here, anybody's here, have them call me. Have them meet me. Listen, bro, if you want to call me, you can call me, but I don't know who you're talking about as far as someone hitting you up. Honestly, I heard what happened. I'm not happy with it. Um, you know, this side, side dude shit, whatever you're talking about, like, I seldomly talked to Annie when you guys were together. Um, I gave you guys your space. Um, you know, and then this shit happens and like, it's just uncalled for, like, you should have put your hands on her and yeah, like it, it rubs me the wrong way, but I don't know who you're talking about, about, uh, some dude hitting you up or my boy. I haven't told anybody about this. This is a private matter. I'm more concerned with, you know, her safety. Um, I don't know what's going on between you guys, but you shouldn't have put your hands on her. You know what I'm saying? It's just a... I'm just saying, as men, like, we're not supposed to be hitting women, you know what I mean? I know you guys probably had your issues, your, your whatever, but I wasn't talking to Annie, okay? And I don't know what you saw or what you think you saw or heard, um, but I'll talk to you straight up, like, face-to-face -face or whatever you want to call me, we can talk. Um, but, yeah, man, it's just, it's just a lot of bullshit, bro. It's not, it's not even called for. There's no reason. And I understand you're probably heated right now. I get it. Um, but, you know, this shit doesn't need to escalate. It just, there's a civil way to handle this. You know what I'm saying? We're grown fucking men. But I was not in the picture in any type of way. Um, I still consider Annie my friend. Um, but we, you know... We went our separate ways and you guys did, you know, you guys had your thing. I understand your place with her. I know you're the, the kid's dad and everything. So I was actually hoping that you guys worked out. Here, bro, this fool tagged you like, is this him? This fool tagged you. Why would somebody tag you if there was your boy, if they didn't know you? Out of the random, nobody's gonna tag you. It's a fucking fake, fake profile, bro. I don't wanna hear it, dog. Like I said, if you guys ever got something to fucking say to me, when you're here, let me know. When I'm out in Playa, I'll call you up. I'm not tripping. Like, we'll get it taken care of, bro. I'm just letting you know, like, if this motherfucker's over here, he's trying to act tough on IG, is this him? Yes, it's me. Let him know. Man, all them motherfuckers know it's me. Am I, am I proud about what happened? I'm not proud of it, dog. But I fucking told that bitch to stop, too. 
Like, she's not all fucking safe and fucking, you know? It's not like she didn't provoke it. And I would say just, you know, take some time, cool down. Um, you probably both need to cool down. But, yeah, like I said, bro, there's a civil way to handle everything. And I really don't do the Instagram shit or the social media shit. I'm hardly on there. So I don't really know what you're talking about, about anybody hitting you, hitting you up that says they're my boy. It's probably some fucking spammer off of her page. You know how her fucking fans are. Bro, send me his tag so I know who you're talking about because I guarantee you I don't know that motherfucker. None of my guy, none of my guys would do that shit on Instagram. Trust me, like I don't roll with fucking dickheads like that. So I don't know who you're talking about, but send him, send the tag to me so I can check him. I don't do the IG, IG shit either. I don't need to calm down. I'm cool, bro. I'm, a, I'm the coolest motherfucker you've ever met. I don't give a fuck about nothing. I just don't push my buttons. That's it. That's all I ask. So, like I said, dog, if you got nothing to fucking, if you got nothing to say to me, I got nothing to say to you. We good. Of the history of the domestic violence in this relationship. A lot of things have changed my perspective on a lot of things since the incident with Walter that you guys have seen. Um, in the last couple of days and there's a lot of questions there's a lot of doubts there's a lot of holes to fill in and you know when this happened i wasn't going to share it just like when kale and i broke up i didn't share it i just stopped posting him stopped talking about him and we broke up i didn't want to share about walter because i didn't want to hear that i told you so's i didn't want to hear, get the backlash but i needed to make it permanent. I needed to not be able to come back and leave the door open. I needed to shut the door completely and it was more for accountability for myself. Initially, I knew that by telling the world, by telling my mom, by telling my parents, my sister, my close friends, it would make it real. Because if I didn't speak about it, it would make it easy to accept his apologies and take him back and pretend like everything was still fine. We have been struggling a lot. It's been a very hard adjustment. Um, a lot of you are dying for his side of the story and I'm in awe of the amount of you that care about why it happened what I did uh, what, what I provoked for me to end up on this bed clawing for air so first I want to talk about when this happened and nobody believed me back in Utah and how it escalates because this is a pattern. This is how all abusers work. You, nobody ever just wakes up and their loved one is beating the shit out of them. A part of this video is to the hundreds of you that sent me DMs after I posted what I posted. And let me know you're living through something very similar in the shadows. A lot of my content has been talking about things that are supposed to be kept in the shadows like felonies. Like the shame of deportation, the shame of criminal convictions, the things that nobody likes to talk about. And it's part of why my content is loved and hated. A lot of you have been following me for a good year and we've built bonds and relationships, you OG besties. And some of you are actually living the same thing and I have no idea. Some of you are living it in the shadows, some of you don't have the ability to get out. Some of you are dependent financially on these men. And I've received hundreds of pictures of bruises of battered women who are my followers. And this video is for all of you. And if, if it, make, it might make a difference for one of you to share, to leave, to get the courage. And in addition to that, it's for me. Because when this happened to me in Utah, nobody believed me. He covered me up as a liar, as psycho, as a cheater. Exactly what's happening right now. So first we're going to start with the history of the domestic violence on Walter's end. He has never placed his hands on me before. But he's always been violent when he's angry. He breaks things. Our fight 
that resulted in our very dramatic breakup back in 2016. I was about four months, three or four months pregnant. Axel was eight or nine months in the living room. We had a fight. I don't even remember what it was about. And he punched a picture frame on the wall and he broke it. Me sacó de onda. He, I'd never seen him like that. I called the police just to make sure he didn't come back. Uh, unbeknownst to me, that was a crime of domestic violence in the presence of a child. The state filed charges without any like consults consulting me. They just took it into their hands and, and charged and charged him. We were still together. Um, when they charged him, we had gotten back together, and you know that just opened up a series of a lot of events. Um, I've talked, we've talked about it some in, in some of the older videos that you can go back and watch. But ultimately, you know, he got charged with domestic. I went and I got a restraining order, not because I was afraid for my life, but because I used it to manipulate the system and to get him in jail. Yes, I lied that he violated that protective order um, to get him in jail because I was bitter, hurt, in pain, and just not here. Um, <laughs> among a lot of other things that I did through the course of our breakup that we've talked about in other videos. After that incident, you know, is when I got charged with my felonies. A lot of things happened. You guys kind of know the backstory. And so that domestic violence, um, you know, he took it to trial. And the day of trial where I was supposed to testify, my prosecutor let me know that he would be dismissing the case because I was not a credible witness due to my felonies and due to the fact that I had lied about him violating the protective order. And it was dismissed and he got away with it. And I felt like, well, fair enough, you know, um, I understand. But I felt like I was robbed of justice, I guess. I still felt like despite everything I had done, he had done this and he should have been held accountable, but he wasn't. And you know, life went on. Um, he had done, he had, gone through similar incidents with Sabrina where he would punch stuff she mentioned to me he would punch he punched like her stereo in her car one time so he just gets mad and hits things he never hit me though he had never placed his hand on me I had never given that narrative that he's a woman beater now I knew that after you know everything happened with us and I got deported he got married he married somebody in Utah and they had a lot of domestic violence incidents and the way that he painted it to me is that she was very violent and would hit him all the time and on one occasion he hit her back he was charged and that charge is currently pending he took off before he was held accountable for that charge for hitting his wife uh, you can see the charging document here so the two incidents where he has been charged he was never actually held accountable so this is a man that has gone around being violent around women and children his own children and gotten away with it and I knew all these things. I knew all these things, and so that is where my responsibility comes from. The fact that I allowed him back into my life under the pretense that he could change, that he had intention. And I am somebody that believes in redemption wholeheartedly. People can change. A lot of you have said, you should have known people don't change. Yes, they do. He may not have. But people change, people grow, people evolve, and he may not have done that at this point, but he will one day, but by then it will be too late. Now, I'm going to sound real stupid here. Although I knew of the incident between him and his wife, and that he's capable of hitting a woman, I didn't think he was capable of hitting me. And I know that sounds silly, but I just felt like our dynamics are so different. We don't have fights where we're, we get in each other's faces, or we yell at each other, or we egg each other on or we we've never had violence physical like we are kind of I just felt like our dynamics were different you know and that would never come into play with us and um, I'm obviously wrong and, and stupid <laughs> to think that I would be any different than his wife so I'm gonna tell you what happened uh, in detail two nights ago when he strangled me and I debated between sharing a lot of this uh, details because I, I don't feel like it matters what happened, why, what I said, how I said it. Nothing could justify a man doing what he did. 
in my opinion, and, and people may have different opinions. I'm sad that I, you know, that some people feel the need to ask why and that they care why instead of that it happened. Anyway, um, Walter and I have had a very turbulent nine months. It has not been easy. And there's been a lot of issues, a lot. It's not that, you know, we got back together and things just picked up where we left off and everything was great. There's a lot of trauma, a lot of so much there. We, we struggled a lot. We were back and forth a lot. We broke up a lot. We'd get back together. I never shared it on social media. Why? Because then, when we, if, when, if and when we got back together, all everybody would judge us and talk shit. And all the people waiting for our, us to break up would get what they wanted, you know? And so I kept it private so that I could take him back, so that we could continue our cycle. And it wasn't major, you know, but I have a lot of resentments and lack of communication. The issues really began with OnlyFans. I know, ironic, right? Because what we portrayed is that he was so supportive and fine with it. There's a lot you guys haven't seen, a lot I haven't shared, because this platform is so huge with so much hate. And generally, when you share a relationship on social media, you jeopardize it. And you then have, you know, this audience that, for example, a lot of you would always tell us, we're rooting for you guys. So many of you were so supportive, and it was amazing. But we felt, it was almost like I felt the need to fulfill expectations. And that's a danger of sharing your relationship on social media. Um, you know, I've shared some stuff. You guys know he kind of, he came, he went. The dynamics of this relationship are important because I, to explain, because it gives some context to what happened two nights ago and what triggered him, in, in, in my opinion. Obviously, you guys have caught on that I'm the main provider of this household. And I have enabled him. I have made his life very easy. And a lot of you told me. Um, but, you know, I I wanted to... That's my love language is providing. Always, in every relationship. And so when he got here, yes, I purchased him a car. The Jeep that he drives, he paid $1,000. I paid about four. I paid for all the maintenance since. And so naturally, I feel like I own that car. I pay for everything, everything. Um, he does have sidekicks here and there, very small ones. And you know, when he did have money, although it was small, he would contribute what he could. He helped a lot with the children. He took care of me during my surgery. He, there's a lot of things that he did right, that he had changed, that he had grown. And it's what gave me hope despite all the things that we were struggling with. And. You know, it's not to discredit the, the efforts that he made, but all of those efforts are out the window with me. <laughs> I, I can't justify the violence with all the great things he was doing because it cancels them out completely for me. Maybe for some people it won't. Maybe for some people they, they you know, they, they would balance that. Well, he did all that. You can get past this. I just I can't. So anyway, um, when we would fight, um, you know, I talk shit. There was verbal abuse on both ends, a lot of it. When we would fight, even though we weren't fighting, um, I began to lose a lot of patience with him. He became very needy, very clingy around OnlyFans, uh, very insecure. He didn't understand that it was just work and he needed to be involved, he needed to see, he needed to go through my phone, he needed to know what I was doing, who I was talking to. I began to feel restricted not free anymore. Even my lives were an issue. I was spending too much time on lives. I, I couldn't work without feeling like he needed me to, like, it, it was just a really uncomfortable. It began to feel like a lot of pressure. It began to feel like this man was making my life harder instead of being supportive. It began to feel like extra weight on my already very heavy load. And he began to deteriorate mentally and emotionally with his transition. He's not coping well. I don't think that what happened has everything to do with me and our relationship. I think a lot of it is displaced from this huge life change that he didn't realize he was taking on. And it, he started to kind of, you know, it started to come out in our fights um, when he would take off and then he would come back and I would kick him out and then he would come back. And 
and we would try and we would fix it and we would keep it on DL and I became very isolated from my friends because I didn't want to, I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed. I have thousands of people waiting to say, I told you so, how could you have done this? It felt wrong to everybody. It was, it, it didn't make sense to everybody. It was like I was taking a step backwards and, and to me it was, it sounds so stupid now, but I thought you had changed. I thought, you know, now away from everybody, we can flourish. Um, I thought that we have both grown and changed, and now we have a real shot. And we did. We did have a real shot. And now there are no what-ifs, because before there were a lot of what-ifs. What if we would have tried? The way that we broke up, there was a lot of things there. And so anyway, um, two nights ago, uh, you know, it's just been really stressful years, and we have had a lot of things going on. A lot, a lot of stress factors from Andre's broken arm to the house. I mean, if you've been following this journey, high amounts of pressure. And we both began to kind of crumble under that pressure and the stress. And so two nights ago, I was just short. You know, I've, I've been just really impatient with him. And I went to sleep. I was exhausted. I, it was a day that I moved the kids back into the, the house after being at the Airbnb spent all day cleaning, just running around. I was exhausted. So I went to bed. I went to bed while he watched the fight in the baby's room. When the fight was over, uh, well, hold on, I missed a part. That night we had a conversation before the fight that he was watching about um, nudes, OnlyFans again. The night before, you know, a package had arrived from Andre's wish list, and he opened it assuming that it was an OnlyFans outfit and he wanted to see it and I was upset that he opened my package, my son's package. I felt like invasion of privacy, you know. Um, I at that point had gotten very, very uh, impatient with the OnlyFans topic. He needed so much reassurance. Um, he, it was, it was like, okay, I had the pressure of OnlyFans to perform on OnlyFans, and on top of that, I had to make sure he was okay with what I was posting on OnlyFans. It felt like a double job, you know, and I would say, like, look, if you want me to quit this, go find a job that's making thousands of dollars to sustain this lifestyle that I have. And obviously he can't, right? Um, we had to work with what we have. He helped with what he could. He did a lot of work at the house. Um, the last few weeks, he kind of checked out with the kids, but again, due to the stress. So anyway, that day we had another argument about OnlyFans and boundaries and a bunch of shit. And the question came up about, he said something like, you don't even go through my phone because you don't care about me. I said, no, I don't go through your phone because I'm going to hurt my own feelings. I know that you have news of your exes. If you guys remember an incident a while ago when he got lost, he took off off-roading and his phone was found in the middle of the street. And I went out at 10 p.m. thinking something happened to him to meet some random stranger with his phone looking for clues of where he had gone. And uh, yeah, I went through the phone trying to find his last clues, his last steps, looking for him. And instead I found nudes of all of his exes, his baby mama, his ex-wife. And I brought it up at that time. And so present day when we were talking about me going through his phone, I said, I don't do that because it's not that I don't care about you. But I just... You know, el que busca encuentra, I don't want to trigger myself. Whatever you're doing, if you're being shady, I mean, you know, it'll come to light. And honestly, I'm just too busy. I'm too busy to, I don't, just don't, that's stuff I did in my 20s, really. Um, and so anyway, he made a comment, and he said something along the lines of, well, don't you have nudes of your exes? And I said, no, I don't. Um, and I lied, because I do. And so I guess he had already gone through my phone and seen those nudes. <laughs> And uh, we left it at that, and I went to bed. He woke me up from, it was like 12, something around there. And I was sleeping in the same Ruxel, and he's like, I, we need to talk, I need to talk. I'm really, you know, something's bugging me. And I was like, I don't fucking want to talk. I'm tired. I'm like, we'll talk tomorrow. I don't want to talk. He was like, come on, we got to talk. We got to talk. And at this point, we're in Axel's room, and... <clears throat> I was like, you're gonna wake up the kids. So I got up, came in here to not wake up Axel. And we argued. He says, you're a liar. You're a fucking liar. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he brings up the nudes. You know, uh, you lied to my face. You do have nudes. I already looked at your phone. And so then I was bothered 
you know, why are you looking through my phone? It's an invasion of privacy. And um, I instantly shut down. I don't want to talk. I said, I don't want to talk. I don't want to talk. And he kept pushing. He kept pushing to talk, to talk, to talk. I just want to fix things. Why are you doing this to me? Is this your way of getting revenge? Um, for everything I did. Like, why are you doing this to me? Why would you do this to me? I feel so played. And I was just... You know, he, he would go from that to, like, shut the fuck up. And, like, bouncing back and forth. And I was like, fuck you. You're not going to disrespect me in my home. Attitude, you know. And then, so I left the room. And I went to the baby's room and I locked the door. And I decided to go to bed. And I would deal with it in the morning. Well, he comes again and jiggles the handle to open the door. And I don't say a word because at this point both both babies are in there. And again, jiggles. So I have my phone and I text him. I'm not coming out. Just get your stuff and leave. Please. He goes and gets the keys to this room. Opens the door. Well, as he was trying to unlock it, I had gotten up and I was holding on to the lock. So that he wouldn't open it. He was too strong. He overpowered me with the key and he unlocked it. As soon as he unlocked it, I stepped out and I shut the door. I didn't want to wake up the kids. At this point, I'm angry. I feel cornered. I feel forced to talk. So I come back into this room. What do you want? I was very shut down. And he's just, just tell me why. Tell me why. Tell me how many of, how many of your exes are you, are you talking to? So all of them. Just shut him up because he was just convinced. I'm cheating on him. So I was just telling him what I wanted to hear so he would leave it because I didn't want to talk. And I kept saying, I don't want to talk to you. I don't owe you anything. I don't care what you think. If you think I cheated on you, that's okay. I don't care to prove myself to you anymore. And again, he, he just kept pushing. And I felt cornered. I felt very cornered in my own home. I couldn't escape. I didn't want to talk. And so finally he was like, I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave, but we're going to talk this out first. And I said, I don't want to talk. I just want you to leave. Get out. And I said it loud. I'm surprised the kids didn't hear me. But when I talked to them in the morning, I was like, did you hear anything out of the norm? And they're like, what do you mean? So as far as I know, they didn't hear. It was as loud as we got. Um, there wasn't yelling. I was just arguing. And I told them they just, you know, I was so frustrated at that point. that I said, get your shit and get the fuck out. I have the Airbnb until Tuesday. Here's the keys. You can go stay there until you figure it out. I'm not going to go. Where am I going to go? How am I going to get all my things right now? And I said, I'll help you. So I went downstairs. I grabbed a box of bags. I came up. I threw them one by one on the bed. And at this point, he already had clothes on the bed. And he said, don't touch my shit or I'm going to hit you. And I challenged him. I did. I said, oh, you're going to fucking hit me. And we were standing right there, right in front of the TV. He didn't hit me, so I turned back around. I grabbed his clothes. I put him in the back. And then he hits the TV. And I was standing probably like that far away from the TV. And so I turned, and once I realized that he hit the TV, I turned back to him. I don't remember what happened at this point. I took a step toward him, but the next thing I remember is he grabbed me by my neck, pushed me up almost to the shelf, to the starby shelf, and then swung me around on the bed, straddled me, and he said, I told you not to touch my shit, you stupid bitch. And he held me there, I don't know for how long. It felt like an eternity. and. In my mind, we locked eyes the whole time. It was a very intimate, it's the weirdest thing to articulate to you of what those moments felt like. I didn't think he was going to let go. My throat was completely clamped. His entire weight was on my throat. And I wanted to say the kids, but I couldn't get it out. The kids is, is what it was in my head. When he let go, he said... Now I can fucking leave. I rolled off the bed onto the floor, caught my breath, and I got up and I ran. 
I ran out the door and I went to the first neighbor's house. I knocked, they didn't open. I went to the next neighbor's house and the door was wide open. And I just ran in and I was crying and he said, he told me, can you help me call the police? While I was there, Walter starts carrying out his things in garbage bags and the neighbors stood there and just watched him. I was afraid he would take one of the kids or both, I don't know, I just, it was a panic moment. He, as he left, he put the keys on my truck and he said, here's your keys, very calmly, it was very, very weird, and he left. The police were called. When the police arrived, he was already gone, and the first thing they asked me is, what did you do? for him to hit you. And I said, I, I I put his clothes in the bag. And and then they started kind of spitting what happened in the TV and I had taken pictures at this point and they're like, well, you can you can file a civil claim for the damages to the TV. And I said, I don't care about the TV. I care about what happened to my neck. I, I care about, I, I felt like I was gonna die in there. And some of you may think this might be dramatic to you, but I f have never felt the imminent fear of death like I did for those few seconds because I didn't think he was going to let go. And what I felt is how I know other people feel right before they die. And it, that moment just changed me. It, it changed my perspective on everything. Normally when Walter and I fight, we come and we break up, I fight him about the Jeep, about material things that I feel belong to me, that I feel used when he takes off and takes the Jeep, or things that belong to me, as he did this time. He stole my drone, the drone that I had just gotten back from getting fixed. He stole my camera. The camera that he has is the camera that I bought for my content creating. The tripod is mine. Uh, he stole my GoPro batteries. It was weird. It, it was like he stole, he grabbed anything of value um, that he had nearby. He took the paperwork to the Jeep. And usually these are things I would fight him on, you know, in past arguments where I would tell him I'm going to file a report, I'm, that the Jeep belongs to me, I'm entitled to it. Um, I literally own everything he has, really. Well, I paid for everything he owns. And, you know, in the past, especially in the few weeks where all these things with the house, I've always said, like, I need you to leave the Jeep because the guys can use that Jeep to go get material and, and do this and that, things that I can't do right now. You know, I'm in a really vulnerable spot with the house the way that it is and the kids. And, um, I didn't care about any of that this time. I don't care. Um, as soon as he left, he texted me that he was sorry. I'm sorry, I love you, I was hurting. I blocked him immediately. I just have no desire to speak to him. I don't care why he did it. I never, the betrayal, I just... I never thought he was capable of doing that to me. And I know that sounds so stupid because if he could do it to someone else, of course he could do it to me. I just believe that because the dynamics of our relationship were so different. I'm not one that's loud in your face, egging you on. Like, however, I look back and he did give me warning signs when he told me, when he warned me, I'm going to hit you. I didn't take him serious. I didn't. I, I didn't think he had it in him. Um, I guess I did challenge him, and maybe there's room for, you know, argument of devoke him. I didn't hit him. I didn't push him. I didn't, you know, I, I look back at other situations that I've been in in my life with, with domestic violence or me being a bitch, or, and I feel like there's other times where, you know, would maybe warrant for argument's sake, but not this one. I wasn't even screaming. Like, I was just calm. Because I was just checking. I just wanted to be left alone. 
Um, it's been a blur since. I feel so belittled. Um, you know, the way that he took power over me for those moments. Knowing that, you know, it was... He had control of my life in his hands for those moments, however long it was. The idea that my kids could have woken up to a dead mother. He lost control. He snapped. He had no way of knowing how my body would react. If my one pipe would crash or not, he's damn near 300 pounds. He's gained a lot of weight. He is a heavy <laughs> dude. I am still recovering. I'm three months post-op for my surgery. My muscles are not where they should be. In fact, I can't even really lay straight yet. I don't have abdomen muscles yet. The way that he <laughs> threw me around like a rag doll, uh, I, I, well, I didn't think it was this bad either. Um, that night, I just had the, the redness. I have very sensitive skin. So it was just the redness. The next morning, I noticed the bruise here. Today, there was a bruise here. Today, I'm sore. I feel like I got hit by a truck. Um, I didn't want to pursue anything here because I don't believe in the justice system at all. There are literally women that are murdered every day here and nothing happens. And they always find a way to blame the woman. Always. I... I shared it primarily because I wanted to make sure that I don't go back. This is the first time and the last time that he will ever have his hands on me like that, ever. <laughs> and I'm one of the lucky ones because I'm in a position where I can get out. I don't depend on him financially. I don't depend on him for anything. At all. I have it as easily as just saying, get the fuck out. And we don't all have that. I've realized that from talking to hundreds of you in the course of the last two days that a lot of you are stuck and can't get out. <laughs> when I shared that that night, one for accountability, two for support, three for direction, and four just in case he came back. Because he knows, and I know, he can get away and he will get away with it here again he gets away with it everywhere that he goes and he's never held accountable in a court of law I think life will hold him accountable at some point I think he's going down a very dark path and keeping him alive here with a full time job because there's certain things that you don't do down here you don't you can't act a certain way down here you can't be puffy puffy like you know this this next slide with with kale so next let's get into his why from his own words and the, the narrative he has been placing which is identical to the narrative he placed in Utah when we broke up you guys know some of our backstory that when I was pregnant with the baby our last baby he shunned her and, and, and said she wasn't his because I was a hoe and I was sleeping around and I was talking to my ex. That ex actually filed an affidavit for our court to, to let him and everyone know that there's no possible way this is my child. Walter knows I never cheated on him. And I spent a lot of years angry and offended with that narrative that I was someone that didn't know who the father of my baby was, that I was screwing around. And that's what he put out to everyone in Salt Lake. And, you know, it, it justified in that I was just a crazy bitch that got caught cheating and he left me and then I went crazy because he got back with Sabrina. That was his side of the story. And it's very identical to the side of the story he's now putting out all over social media from saying that I provoked him, that I'm not a saint, that I'm lying, and only him and I know what happened here. And he hasn't denied it, 
because he knows. He spent a lot of years denying what happened in Utah and excusing it that Axel wasn't even there. The police noted he was there because he was there. But nobody believed me in Utah. And maybe nobody will believe me now because of our history. But you can't ignore the documented pattern that he has with every woman in his life. And my responsibility came in believing he had changed. Believing that there's no way he could do it to me. It's me. I'm the mother of his kids. I've never hit him. I don't, you know, Sabrina and Karina, they all hit him, spit in his face. They were violent at him, and he never hit them back. With the exception of, you know, Karina. I always looked at him like a gentle brute. Like he didn't have it in him. And I now feel like he's capable of anything. I don't know him. The fact that he had no regard for our children in that room. That he pulled me out of there twice to fight. That entire night I was trying to run from him. I was trying to avoid the fight, avoid the conversation. I didn't want to talk. I didn't care about it. I was very cold. That triggered him because I didn't care. And he said things like, is this your way of revenge? Why are you doing this to me? Why did you do this to me? Why did you just waste all of our time? I, it was my fault that it didn't work out. And I, and I was just like, what the f I didn't ask you to come here. I didn't tell you to leave your life. You came here on your own. One thing led to another. And here we are. It didn't work. It's okay. Life goes on. Um, I feel he is just mentally unstable, independent of our relationship. I feel like without me, he has nothing. And that makes him panic every time we would fight. In addition to all the things that he left with, um, I had transferred him money last week to pay the guys at the house. 500 bucks, you know, because he was the head of, he was in charge of the guys, he was working with them, and so I would send him the money and he would pay them. He took off with that too. Um, I just feel kind of taken advantage of, and, and I know a lot of you guys told me, like, he's just there because you're up, he's just there because you're TikTok famous. It sounded really silly to me at the time, I still don't know that I believe that, but I can't help but feel used. <laughs> And abused. I'm not a bit. I mean, I am, but I'm not. I feel partly responsible for what happened to me because I knew better and didn't do better. But I would have never. I just. I feel like it, it caught me off guard. There have been times in the last few weeks where he would get aggressive when he was mad, right? He would, uh, fucked up my mare moving shit packing the stuff one time he would make like really like like movements and get really angry but never like physically so I, I just thought I don't know I know it sounds stupid but I thought it was limited to, to objects where does that leave us now right um so he left I have filed the appropriate reports. It went to the women's center. It's like a police station specifically for for domestic abuse. I walked in and there was a this small girl. She was beat everywhere. She had bruises all over her arms and all over her face. And she looked so broken and I looked at her. It was, I couldn't believe I was there. I felt out of place. Like this isn't, how am I here? How am I here? How did I allow things to get this far? 
how did I give away my peace to him again? I left all this behind. I had peace here. I had rebuilt. I had left all the garbage there, but I always had the if I had the wonder. I had the dream of a family of support. He was a piece for a piece of home here. Piece of Salt Lake. That was comforting to have a piece of home here. It's lonely here. It's scary here. He became a Like a, a wing of protection, of safety. We have someone now that is gonna look out for us. I have someone if something happens to me and the kids. I have someone now. And I gave away my peace. I look back. How chaotic the last few months have been since he came back into my life. And I hate to say it, but I used to tell him the same thing in Utah. And I used to feel the same. But from the moment I started dating him, my life turned into chaos. And it happened out here too. And I, I don't want to blame him for everything bad that happens to me. But something about his energy... darkens my aura every time I didn't want to acknowledge it I didn't want you guys to be right I wanted him to prove me wrong I wanted him to prove all of you wrong I, I believed in him I believed in his desire to redeem himself as a father and a man and in some ways he did in some ways he was great and he stepped up he took care of us and he was there at tanto. But all of that is canceled out for me. With what happened on this bed. All of that goes out the window. When I felt he was going to kill me. None of the great things that he has done outweighs at one moment. The, the trauma that's followed after the constant replay of where I went wrong. I shouldn't have challenged him. I shouldn't have touched his clothes. I should have just sat here and listened and, and said what he needed to hear. And I was trying when he was like, how many dudes did he cheat with? I said, all of them. I just wanted to give him what he wanted so we could stop talking. But I feel like every way I replay it, I think it was going to happen. I think it would have happened eventually if it wasn't last night. It would have been a week, two weeks, next time. Because that was a buildup of something dark inside of him. I've been fighting my logic and my heart with, am I overreacting? Am I just a drama queen? Was I really going to die at that moment? Was he just trying to shut me up? But how could he have known? He lost it for that split second. What if he had taken a few more seconds or minutes to regain composure? What if? So many what ifs. I saw a couple of you guys, you know, seen a lot of comments, a lot of support. But it's always the negative comments that stick out to us as humans. The negativity attracts us. Somebody said something about, ah, she was just showing off how much she likes being choked out during sex. And it's not funny, but today as I was driving and playing it again, I thought to myself, I'll never enjoy being choked out during sex again. That will always take me back to him and the look those moments we locked eyes, I just, 
I want to know what I look like to him. I want to know what he saw. I want to know what my face looked like because I thought I was going to die. And I, I, I want to wonder, I want to know if that seared into his mind the way that his face is seared into mine. The anger. The way his hand circled around my neck. I want to know that he, it's haunting him as much as it's haunting me. Because I just don't want to accept that I deserve that. <laughs> this narrative that I was cheating with Kale, right? I never even talked about why we split up because it was a very amicable split. Kale and I had taken some space before Walter arrived. And I think if Walter hadn't arrived, Kale and I would have kept trying. Kale and I had a hard time evolving as a couple when the dynamics changed from just us to five kids. Okay, so we didn't talk much. Kale gave us our space. Kale, he checked in every now and then. And, you know, I let him know we're doing good. And that was it. And I think Walter has convinced himself, along with I don't know how many others, that I was cheating. And I played him. And for argument's sake, even if I was, even if he had walked in to me having an orgy, bed. I can't justify the violence. I can't. And maybe you can't, but I can't. He's lost his shit on social media. Um, you can see through these clips. Oh, you know, just post it up, mad board. Bum. Call me, hit my line. Let's go meet up. Let's get taken care of. You're talking tough. Who is this, him? Yeah, this is me, bitch. What's up? Say what the fuck you say. Do what you gotta do. Pull up. I'm in Bayata. He reached out to Kale. And here's our conversation with these wild comments circulating that paint him in a bad light and it I'm embarrassed that I'm embarrassed that what's happening that he's been dragged into it and been portrayed as this side boo as someone I was cheating with Kale's a very well put together man and um, he's a great friend but this gives you the context of who Walter is in these messages and where his mindset is. That Walter in those messages is the Walter that was here on Sunday. That Walter is the Walter that I have spent eight months trying to keep alive because that attitude will get you killed out here. That Walter is the Walter that I am now afraid of. And I feel little around him. I see his face, I hear his voice, and I feel... I thought in a worst case scenario, he would break my heart, not my soul. I thought the worst thing that could happen is that he would leave us again. That we survived the first time and we could do it again. I never saw this as a possibility. I think I'm still in shock that it happened. I think I'm still battling myself on was it really that bad or come on, like he wouldn't really hurt you, would he? But then they hear the way he expresses himself about me with so much hate. 
I see the way he's, you know, talking on social media about me. And I think to my I'm not even doing that. I don't hate you, Walter. But I can't forgive this. And I can't have my son turn out like you. I can't risk you taking off with my kids in Mexico. I refuse to give up my peace again. And so it ends. This is it. This is the end, and there are no more what ifs. Now we both know that it was also never meant to be. Now we both know that to date, we still bring out the worst in each other. Now we both know that our children are better off without two parents together. Now I know that my children are better off with an absent father than an abusive father. I can't justify, I, I can't, I refuse to be afraid for my life around him. I don't know how long it will go away, how long until it goes away. This isn't my first experience with domestic violence, but that's the first time I think I really felt like I was gonna die at the hands of my partner. Today when I went to the center for, the women's center, to give you an idea of what, how these things are handled in Mexico, when the police came, they took a report, they gave me a case number. Today we went to the women's center and when we got there, they said, all right, we can make an appointment for you for Thursday to get a, a, an order of protection. I said, Thursday? What happens if he comes back between now and Thursday? Was it cover si tienen tiempo? Let me see if they have time. As part of these procedures, um, they gave you a free medical evaluation to document all your injuries, take pictures, and assess your health. My only thought is, well, I just have one little bruise here. That's it. I don't think I need one. When we got when we got back there, um, I didn't realize how much damage there was that you don't see. It's not always a bruise, you know, and sometimes I, I they found bruises I didn't even know I had. I have a muscular contraction on the left side of my body, all up and down my back. Um, I have extreme swelling on my abdomen where, you know, it's normal to have a bit of swelling as I'm still recovering from my tummy tuck, but something in the way that he moved me or my body moved when he, I don't know, whatever he did, uh, it pulled something, it, it did something, I'm, I have extreme pain and swelling in this little area of my tummy, and I have bruises on both sides where I imagine his fingers were, so I pretty much have his fingerprints. <laughs> Oh, my neck. <laughs> it hurts to swallow. I feel like I have, you know when your tonsils are swollen? I feel, it hurts to swallow. Um, I never had my throat, like my windpipe completely, whatever the fuck this is, closed. The feeling of not being able to gasp to make a noise. 
your body like panicking thinking it's dying you can't make a peep and I feel so cowardly because in that moment I wanted to call out for Amaya to come help me I feel ashamed of the way that I ran out and left a monster inside my house with my kids. I was scared to come back in. I know it's, I'm at peace, I'm at peace, there's a lot of lessons to take away from this entire experience, a lot of things I still need to work on, a lot of boundaries within myself that I need to fix, I'm, I've always had this way of allowing people back into my life, of revisiting toxic circles of enabling my abusers. That's a heavy word, isn't it? Abuser. Abuse is such a heavy word. I think we were both verbally abusive to each other at one point or another. I'm not perfect. I'm a bitch. I'm hard to deal with. I have high anxiety. I raise my voice. I yell. I swear called them names before. I made him feel like shit, he told me. You know that this financial situation where he wasn't providing really made him feel like shit. I... There's a lot of things that I did that I know. But sometimes things just don't work out. It's okay. Sometimes things just don't work out. And sometimes there is no closure. And I think this is life's way of teaching us both lessons that we needed to learn from one another. In a relationship, there's always one person that's more committed or more loving than the other. Six years ago, it was me. This time, it was him. I felt like I outgrew him in a lot of ways wasn't attracted to him anymore there was no spark but I was in love with the idea of my family him and the kids bond isn't entirely what it should be I made a lot of excuses for him because he's the father of my kids I have some responsibility, but I refuse to accept that anything that I did or said justified what he did to me. I refuse. Even if I was all the things he says I am. I, everything I did for him I didn't do it with the expectation of being paid back in any way. It's just, I'm a natural born provider, that's how I show my love. And, but I would lie if I told you that. I'm so disappointed after everything I did for him. I enabled him. I set him up, in my, in my view, I set him up for success. You know, I got him a car so he could move around. I gave him an audience so he could sell to. I got him a shop so he can build up a business here. 
I was going to fund it, he was going to work it. He would be the labor, I would be the funds, the team effort. He couldn't follow through with anything. He had no... He had no uh, momentum. He wasn't consistent. You know, there's weeks where he would he would do great, and he would go to the gym every day, and he would he would be on that shit, and then he would just fall off and start drinking every day again. He gained weight. He just wasn't happy with himself, and I became frustrated. You know, I felt like we weren't on the same wave, the same hustle, the same energy. I needed somebody to match my, I need someone to match my hustle or get the fuck out of my way. This whole OnlyFans things, you know, honestly, I feel like OnlyFans is what did us in. We already had issues. OnlyFans was it for me. I was frustrated. I felt like, how dare you have anything to say about how I'm getting us by right now? I don't want, like, you know what I mean? Like, how, I just, I don't know. I don't know. I lost patience. I lost desire. I, I lost a lot of things. I, be, I became really turned off with the way that he carried himself. And, you know, some things just don't work out. And yes, there are two sides of the story. There are. There always are. There always was mine and frankly I've, I've always felt his doesn't matter it doesn't justify what happened then or now and that's it that's the end of walnut and annie and life goes on and i'll rebuild my peaceful castle again that's what I'm good at, is rebuilding. Drop that bitch.